Now you see when you talk about covalent compounds or covalent bonds, what you learned is that these compounds that have covalent bonds have low melting and low boiling points. You remember that? But when it comes to diamond and graphite, these are not compounds. These are made up of pure carbon only. And these two forms of carbon are diamond and graphite. Now, how can one element exist in two different forms? This property by which one element exists in two or more different forms is called allotropism. And these are called allotropes of carbon. Is that clear? Any doubts? Now, what is an allotrope? An allotrope is two different forms of the same element. And they show different physical properties. Now, for example, diamond has a higher, a very high melting point when compared to graphite. Graphite also has a high melting point but the melting point is lower than diamond. So this is a lower melting point than diamond. We'll see why each of these properties exist, okay? Secondly, graphite conducts electricity, but diamond cannot conduct electricity, does not conduct electricity. Diamond is very, very hard, whereas graphite is slippery. And because it's very slippery, it is a good solid lubricant. Is it clear? Now, why are these properties different? When both of them are made up of the same compound, why should the prop both of them are made up of the same element, not compound? Why should the properties be different? The arrangement of the atoms are different, and that's because of the type of the way in which they are bonded. Now, let's have a look at how they are different. See, each of these circles here represents one carbon atom. Now, let's look at the chemistry of carbon atoms first. Okay before we go further into this. Now, if we look at the chemistry of a carbon atom, you know, carbon 6, 12. That means it has the electronic configuration 2, 4. So in the first shell, there'll be two electrons. And in the second shell, there are four electrons. So if carbon has to complete its outermost shell, how many, at a, how many electrons will it need? It will need four more electrons to complete its outermost shell because the outermost shell must have eight electrons. The second shell must have eight electrons. So each carbon can form four covalent bonds with other carbon atoms. Can you understand this? Now, if you look at, so what's the maximum number of bonds each carbon can form? Four covalent bonds. Now, if you look at diamond, let's look at this one. I'll, I'll color this in pink. Now, let's look at this one carbon atom in the center. How many covalent bonds has it formed? Let's see. We'll, we'll color those bonds red. One, two, three, four. Can you understand this? Look at another carbon atom in this. Okay. Let's look at this carbon atom here. How many bonds has it formed? Likewise, one, two, three, four. So, are there any free electrons? Are there any free electrons in, in these carbon atoms? All the electrons in the outermost shell have formed covalent bonds with other carbon atoms. So because there are no free electrons, the diamond does not conduct electricity. So what happens in diamond? See, in diamond, each carbon atom, each carbon atom forms what? Four, most of them, four covalent bonds, four covalent bonds with other carbon atoms. So is there any way by which it can conduct electricity? So there are no free electrons to conduct electricity. Can you understand why diamond cannot conduct electricity? Now let's come to graphite. Now have a look at this carbon atom here. Let's color the carbon atoms pink again. Now here's the carbon atom here. How many bonds has it formed? One, two, three bonds. If you look at any carbon atom in that structure, it's forming only three covalent bonds with other carbon atoms. So what will happen to each carbon atom? Will each carbon atom now have one free electron? And those electrons can flow if we connect it to a circuit where there's a potential difference. The charges will flow. We are not showing the complete structure. We are showing a very small part of it now. So most of them will be bonded. The ones at the edges will have less bonds, but most of them in the core will have three bonds with other carbon atoms. Can you understand this? Now, if you look here, 
Now, why can graphite conduct electricity? Now, in graphite, what happens? Each carbon atom, what happens to it? Is bonded covalently to what? To three other carbon atoms. So, what happens? So, each carbon atom has one free electron, comma, which allows graphite to conduct electricity. So, what will be your simple answer? If you ask why can graphite conduct electricity but diamond uh, cannot conduct electricity, answer is in diamond, each carbon atom forms four covalent bonds. So, there's no free electrons left to conduct electricity. Whereas in graphite, each carbon atom is covalently bonded to three other carbon atoms, but carbon can actually form four bonds. There are four free electrons in the outermost shell. So, there are free electrons which can be used to conduct electricity. Is this clear now? Okay. Now, you see, why is graphite a good lubricant? Whereas diamond is not a good lubricant. Diamond is very hard and yes. Now, why is it slippery? Now, if you look at this, now this is a carbon atom and this is a covalent bond. Now, if you look at graphite, this is a carbon atom. This is a covalent bond and this structure, the dotted line, is called a van der Waals force, which are very weak forces. Now, now look here. Now, in graphite, in graphite, what happens is each carbon is bonded to three other carbons, and the fourth electron is used to form these weak forces of attraction between the layers. Now, here you see in graphite the layers the the carbon atoms are arranged in hexagons whereas in diamond this is tetrahedral four-sided can you understand that so in diamond the carbon atoms are arranged in a stable tetrahedral arrangement which makes diamond very hard and of course stable okay Whereas in graphite, in graphite, the carbon atoms are arranged in a hexagonal manner, in a hexagonal arrangement and is found in layers. Now, the layers are held by what? Weak van der Waals, remember the name, okay? Van der Waals forces, yes, comma, which allows the layers to slide over each other. Can you understand that? So that it can act as a good lubricant. Any questions on this? Now you see, even though graphite and diamond are covalent molecules, they're not covalent compounds, they're covalent molecules because they're made up of the same atoms, right? Only carbon. It's not a compound, it's an element. But they're covalent molecules. Now covalent molecules should have a low melting point. But these have high melting points because there are large number of covalent bonds. And that's why the melting points are very high. Now, why is the melting point of diamond more than that of graphite? Because each carbon in diamond forms four covalent bonds. Whereas in graphite, each carbon forms three covalent bonds. So, which has more number of covalent bonds? And because this has more covalent bonds than graphite, the melting point is higher because more energy will be needed to break these bonds, to set the molecules free so that they can melt and flow away from each other. They can slide over each other. Can you understand this now? And these molecules are called as macro molecules because they're very large molecules, giant molecular structure, macro molecular structure. You'll often come across this, okay? And if they ask you why they have a high melting point even though they are covalent compounds, your answer has to be because they have a large number of covalent bonds. A lot of energy is needed to break all these bonds. Is that clear?